Hello, welcome to Sheriff Amenity Academy. My name is Matthew Lebrun, and today we're going to be looking at spreader calibration and application. It's vitally important that we make sure that our spreaders are calibrated perfectly, as this is how we're going to deliver the granular fertilizers or pesticides to the turf at the correct rates. If the calibration isn't done correctly, then the product may be misapplied, and we either end up with too much or too little. So spreaders can be calibrated in a few different ways, and we're going to take you through just a fast, simple, and effective way of doing this. So today we're going to be using the Trojan 30 Plus spreader, and I'm going to be running you through the characteristics and the workings of how this actually operates. Before we begin calibration and application, I'm going to give you a quick run through of the working parts of the Trojan 30 Plus spreader. The best place to start is with the hopper and this is where we insert all of our products and materials. As we look into the hopper, you will notice a couple of extra parts that are inside here. Number one being the wire mesh at the bottom. And this is designed to break up any large particles of your fertilizer to make sure we get an even distribution all the way through. After we take this out, you will notice an agitator at the bottom here. And as we walk forward, this will spin round and make sure the product again is smooth with an even distribution. At the bottom of the hopper you will notice there is a hole. This is where the product is gravity fed onto the rotating plate. When the holes are open granulars are gravity fed through this and strike a gear driven rotating plate which distributes the granular by centrifugal force. The amount of product that falls through these holes is regulated by an adjustable lever usually located at the back of the hopper. The adjustable lever can be set on numbers or letters that correspond to the size of the hopper openings. With whatever spreader you are using, they are all factory calibrated. However, calibration should be checked occasionally to ensure optimum performance. And I'll give you a quick run through of how we do that. So, number one, we're going to pull the on-off lever switch to the off position. Step two, with the rate control plate, we are now going to adjust that setting to B as per the manual. Once the control plate is set on B, we are going to flip the on-off control lever to the on position. With this, we are going to check the part opening and it should be just slightly open and we can make adjustments if necessary. We've had a good run through now of the basic working parts of the rotary spreader and also we've double checked that it's 100% accurate from the factory setting. We now need to have a look deeper into getting an accurate calibration for the product that we're applying. In order to give you an accurate measurement of how much product that we're actually applying, you're going to need a few simple tools. You're going to need one measuring jug, a measuring tape, some scales, a dustpan and brush, some tape, and seven seed trays. Items that everyone should have available. So with the materials we've got, we're gonna set up a simple test. The first thing we're gonna do is mark out a meter square on our hard surface. This is gonna measure the amount of product per meter square. We then set the seven trays at the end of the run, and this is gonna tell us our effective swap width. We now have everything set up, ready to start our calibration test. We have filled the hopper with about a third of the way up of product. With this, we are double checking the manufacturer's guideline. With the product we are using, it is giving us a guideline of L. So this is our start point. So I'm gonna begin walking towards the trays and my meter square marked out, making sure that I switch the lever on after I've started walking. As soon as I get past the trays, I'm gonna turn the lever off so no more product can come out. After applying this, what we will then be doing is sweeping up all of the product that's inside this meter square and then weighing the product. This will give us a clear indication for how much product we're applying per meter square. We have now swept up all the product. We're going to do our first test and as you can see on the scale, we're a little bit out. Our desired amount is 35 grams per square meter and at the moment we are getting 25 grams. So now with this, I need to apply slightly more product. Depending on the outcome, you need to adjust up or down as necessary. 
to obtain the 35 grams per square meter. You will repeat this process until you get the desired amount spot on. Once you've done three to four passes, we're then going to have a look at what product is inside these pans. What you should see is in the center pans and the pans that are closer to the spreader, this is where the product will be. As you start going out of the outer pans, you'll see less and less product. In order to get an accurate measurement of your swath width, we need to determine how far this is. An easy and quick way of doing this is taking the contents from the center pan and working outwards. You're roughly looking at half of that on the outer pans. That will give you your swath width. And that's a difference we are going to be overlapping by. So you now join me outside, okay, where we're ready to apply our product. After the quick, easy calibration tests we've done inside, we now know that we're putting on the exact required amount per square meter, which is 35 grams for us. We also know our exact swap width, so I can work out the exact requirements I need for my overlap. Before doing this as well, it's also important to remember that when filling the hopper with the product, that the lever is in the off position, so the product doesn't come out of the bottom, it's usually best practice to do this on a hard surface away from where you're applying. Also, before you apply the product, you need to ensure that you're wearing all appropriate PPE required. You can find this on your safety data sheets or on the Sheriff website. Fortunately for me, uh, we're using a dummy product here today just for a demonstration, so there's no health and safety requirements needed. I'm now going to start applying the product. For me, luckily I'm going to be working towards the base here, so I don't need to mark anything out. There are two different standard approaches to application, single or double pass, also called 100% overlap or pattern to pattern. With the single pass or 100% overlap, this method is based on applying 50% application rate in one pass in one direction. The next pass is spaced over half the effective pattern width and applying 50% application rate in the opposite direction as shown in the image. The second standard approach is the double pass or pattern to pattern. This method is based on applying 100% application rate in one pass over the full effective pattern width and applying 100% application rate in the opposite direction as shown. Once you have decided which method you will use, you need to fill the hopper with the required fertilizer and proceed. When filling the hopper, make sure it is standing on level ground and preferably on concrete. So if you have any spillage, it's easy to clear up. If you fill up on the grass and have a spillage, you will scorch your grass. So this should be avoided at all times. So when applying the product, it's important to remember okay that we're going to be going at a nice even speed all the way down and i'm working towards the middle of the bay also with this you've got to remember not to push the hopper about or rock it back and forth as this will affect the dispersal of the product and also i only put the lever on okay once you've started walking so i'm going to crack on and do this area here When you finish your application, be sure to just quickly insert the information into your turf record system to comply with all health and safety legislations. So we've now finished applying our product, so the only thing left for us to do is to just make sure it's ready for operation for our next application. With this we're going to be washing it down, ensuring all the product is off the uh, spreader and also any points are greased and it's ready to go. After we've finished doing all of our applications and we're ready to return the spreader, it's important that we wash down in the correct manner. And we need to remember a few steps. Number one, never store materials in the spreader. Return unused product to its original container. Number two, wash spreader thoroughly after use, making sure the port and pivot plate inside the hopper are clean of particles that could prevent the port plates from being flipped over easily. Allow the spreader to dry completely in the sun or a heated area. Number three, grease the axle bearings in the frame. 
all the impeller shaft bearings in the hopper and pivot points on the shutoff linkage. Also springs in the housing behind the rake plate. Number four, remove the gear cover and wash the gears thoroughly and oil all bearing areas as shown. Reinstall gear cover. Number five, gear mesh should be checked on a regular basis during high period use. Clearance between axle gear and pinion gear should be minimal but not tight. If adjustments are necessary, loosen the axle collar set screw and hold the gears together. Slide the axle collar against the gear support and title axle collar set screw. Spin the drive wheel and the gears should run freely and smoothly. Number six, impeller surface should be cleaned periodically to remove buildup of product. Build up of product can cause the spreader pattern to change. And number seven, a quick check on the tyre pressure. Well, I hope you've enjoyed and found it useful um, the demonstration video for product application and calibration. For more information about anything we've talked today, please follow the links at the bottom of the page.